18th um, <laughs> council meeting announcement session in advance of the meeting. Um, we're gonna start with a presentation by council member Cash. Uh, I know we've got one for the uh, Fisk Jubilee Singers, but first uh, I wanna take the time to honor Dr. Bob Fisher for his service to, to uh, Nashville and to Belmont University uh, over, the, over the many years, recent many years. Um, and at the second meeting in April, council unanimously passed a resolution to him. And uh, I'd like for us to uh, share that with the council and with the city. Uh, there are many accomplishments here. We were not able to include them all because we'd be here quite a long time, but we did want to highlight and share uh, some of the great things that Dr. Fisher has done for our community. For A resolution, resolution recognizing Dr. Bob Fisher on his retirement. Whereas Dr. Bob Fisher will retire in May 2021 after more than two decades serving as president of Belmont University, and whereas Fisher earned his BS, BA from Henderson State University, an MBA from the University of Memphis, and a PhD in economics and management from the University of Arkansas before entering a career in academic service. And whereas prior to his Belmont appointment in April 2000, Fisher served as a professor at the University of Central Arkansas, Dean of the School of Business at Henderson State University, and then Vice President of Academic Affairs at Arkansas State University. And Whereas, throughout Dr. Fisher's tenure, Belmont University has grown exponentially in size, stature, and status, becoming the largest ecumenical Christian university in the nation. And whereas, affectionately known around Belmont as Bob the Builder, <laughs> Bob Fisher has led the campus throughout extraordinary development since his tenure began, with more than $1 billion invested in new facilities and property acquisitions, resulting in new athletic facilities, the Curb Event Center, and McAfee Concert Hall, among many others, and... Whereas Fisher's tireless efforts at Belmont's helm led to the addition of a College of Law, a College of Pharmacy, and the announced plans for a College of Medicine, as well as the expansion of undergraduate and graduate programs. And whereas during Dr. Fisher's tenure, Belmont University remarkably hosted two presidential debates on campus, one in 2008 and most recently in 2020. And whereas throughout his time in Nashville, Dr. Fisher has also given of his time for the betterment of Nashville, including service as chair of the board for the Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation, the Policing Policy Commission, the Board of Directors for the National Museum of African American Music, the Pencil Foundation, and Alignment Nashville, and whereas it is fitting and proper that the Metropolitan Council recognizes the outstanding accomplishments of Dr. Bob Fisher and wish him well in his retirement. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Metropolitan Gover Government of Nashville and Davidson County that the Metropolitan County Council hereby goes on record in honoring Dr. Bob Fisher upon the occasion of his retirement as president of Belmont University and uh, the Metropolitan Council office is directed to prepare a copy of this resolution for Dr. Fisher. I'd be glad to hold that if you'd like to say a few words. Okay. Well, first of all, uh, thank you all, and thank you to each one of these presenters. They've all, every one of these folks have played a very important role in the work that we've been doing at Belmont. Thank you for that. Thank you, uh, Councilman Cash, for sponsoring this resolution. When he told me about it, my first response was, uh, does that uh, require a two-thirds vote or just a majority? <laughs> uh, and he, he assured me it, it'd be okay, and it is okay. And I so thank all of you. I thank the, all the council for this recognition. It's a, it's a big deal to me. And I just would also say tonight, I think we may have another university being recognized. Uh, I hope this council, and I know you do, but I hope you 
you appreciate all the universities in this city. It, we were the Athens of the South before we were Music City, and I'm cool with Music City, but let's remember all the great universities in this city and what they contribute to Nashville and to its growth and, and its development. So again, thank you and good night. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Fisher. All right, we're gonna let photos take place for a second and then we'll go to Councilmember Stiles. Now take your time, get a good photo. All right, Councilmember Stiles, you're up next. Councilmember Stiles, are you ready to go? Sorry, Pro Tem, trying to get things organized and get everyone up here. We have many people reading. So if I could get council members to come this way, please. <laughs> council member Cash, Allen, Hurt. Council member Sledge. There are a lot of tabs, so. Okay, so good evening. Thank you all so very much for being here. I'm really excited to present this resolution, recognizing the Fist Jubilee Singers on the occasion of their first ever Grammy Award. And what makes this even more special, not only that this, it's been 150 years that they have been in existence, but that this truly was a Nashville project. And if you would come over here, Dr. Kwame, please. And the producer of this project is also a Nashvillian. It is Shannon Sanders, who many of us know. He, he was the man who brought us Indy Ari and many other artists. And he produced this project. I'm so excited to have both of you here this evening. So we're actually going to read this resolution. If you could stand right here. And council members are going to come up and appreciate you. OK, council member Syracuse, you are first. Whereas, 150 years after the original group was founded and subsequently brought African-American music to the world, Nashville's Fisk Jubilee Singers have won their first ever Grammy Award. And, whereas at a pre-telecast premiere ceremony, the vocal groups celebrating Fisk the 150th anniversary album was named Best Roots Gospel Album, earning them their first Grammy since forming in 1871. And... Whereas the Grammys have only existed for 63 of those 150 years, 
The group even predated the advent of commercial recordings and Whereas the Fisk Jubilee singers are vocal artists and students at Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee, who sing and travel worldwide. The original Fisk Jubilee singers, a group of former slaves who battled prejudice and oppression to sing their way into the nation's heart and introduced slave songs to the world and were instrumental in preserving this unique American musical tradition known today as Negro spirituals and whereas they are the first intent internationally acclaimed group of African-American musicians who attained first recognition, then fame, and along the way financed their school, and whereas on November 16, 18, 1871, a group of unknown singers, all but two of them former slaves and many of them still in their teens, arrived at Oberlin College in Ohio to perform before a nationally National Convention of Influential Ministers. After a few standard ballads, the chorus began to sing spirituals, Steal Away, and other songs associated with slavery and the dark past, sacred to our parents. As soprano Ella Shepard recalled, it was one of the first public performances of the secret music African Americans had sung in fields and behind closed doors and Whereas, in the decade following the Civil War, this group of young ex-slaves in Nashville, Tennessee, set out on a mission to save their financially troubled school by giving concerts. Treasurer George Leonard White proposed traveling first through the cities in the North, then on to venues across Europe. The Jubilee Singers introduced audiences to the power of spirituals, the religious anthems of slavery, and... And whereas following, following the path of the Underground Railway, the group debuted in Cincinnati, and whereas they would perform for presidents and queens, toured the United States and Europe, and established songs like Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, and This Little Light of Mine as a cherished part of the nation's musical heritage, and... Whereas funds raised by the Fist Jubilee Singers during their international concerts were used to construct the school's first permanent building, Jubilee Hall. Jubilee Hall, one of the oldest structures in use at Fisk University, is designated as a National Historic Landmark by the U.S. Department of the Interior. This beautiful Victorian Gothic building houses a ceiling-to-floor portrait of the original Jubilee Singers, commissioned by Queen Victoria of England as a gift to Fisk University. And Whereas, established in January 1866, Fisk taught freed slaves how to count their wages, how to write the new names they had chosen for themselves, and read both the ballad and the Bible, and... Whereas life on the road took its toll as White and the singers endured rheumatism, bronchitis, chronic coughs, their clothes ran to rags. But after the triumphant Oberlin performance, word started to spread. In December, the Jubilee Singers appeared at Henry Ward Beecher's weekly prayer meeting at Brooklyn's Plymouth Church. Every church wanted the Jubilee Singers from that time on, wrote Maggie Porter. They sang for Mark Twain, President Ulysses S. Grant, congressmen, diplomats, and... Whereas the ensemble raised what today would be millions of dollars, but they paid a terrible price. George White lost his wife to typhoid fever. White himself nearly died of a pulmonary hemorrhage. Contralto Minnie Tate's voice was, was torn to shreds. Tenor Benjamin Holmes's nagging cough was caused by tuberculosis. They faced discrimination on the road and from the press. A grueling tour of Germany, 98 days, 41 pounds, 68 concerts, brought with it low morale, frayed nerves, and rivalries among the singers. And whereas, their contributions extended far beyond Fisk University as they had introduced the world to the power of spirituals and challenged racial stereotypes on two continents. In their wake, 
hotels, railways, steamship lines, and boards of education integrated their facilities. The Fisk Jubilees not only introduced the world to the music of black America, they championed the liberties of all Americans, says Andrew Ward, co-writer of the documentary and author of Dark Midnight When I Rise, the story of the Jubilee singers. And? Whereas it is fitting and proper that the Metropolitan Council recognizes the Fisk Jubilee singers for their recognition of receiving their first ever Grammy Award. And now therefore be it resolved by the Council of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County. Uh, the Metropolitan Council hereby goes on record as recognizing the Fisk Jubilee Singers on the occasion of their history-breaking Grammy Award. The Metropolitan Council Office is directed to prepare a copy of this resolution to be presented uh, to President Frank L. Sims, Dr. Paul T. Kwame, Mike Kerb, Jubilee Singers, Endowed Chair of the Fisk Jubilee Singers, and students, alumni, faculty, staff, and trustees of Fisk University. This resolution shall take effect from and after its adoption, the welfare of the Metropolitan Government and of Nashville and Davidson County requiring it. Can we get a brief photo over here? I'm going to have to give you the... Thank you. Would you like to all say a few words? Repeat that pro tem, I didn't hear you. Just wondering whether the folks from Fisk want to say a few words. Yes. Will you? Will you say a few words? <laughs> Sometimes I don't know what to say. Um, but this is one of those uh, occasions where a simple thank you is appropriate. And I do want to thank all of you for recognizing the Fisk Jubilee Singers, a group of young men and women who in 1871 established an important form of American music. Not only that, but they sacrificed the education and sounds traveled to raise funds for Fisk University. Um, your support makes it easy for us to continue holding on to this legacy. And I thank you very much on behalf of Fisk University and on behalf of all Fisk Jubilee Singers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right, um, since we're running short on time, while you all take pictures, I'm going to go to any council member that has an announcement. Then we've got one other unscheduled presentation we'll get to before our time is up. Council member Bradford. Thank you, Pro Tem. I have three quick announcements. I want to remind everybody in District 13 that this Thursday, on the 20th, from 6 to 7.30 p.m., there would be a Zoom meeting. It will be our second working session for the Preserve at Priest Lake development. Secondly, this Saturday from 8 to 10 a.m., we will be having a community cleanup. Um, all volunteers are invited to meet us at 8 a.m. at Glenview Elementary School. And lastly, just want to provide an update starting next month. My office hours will move to in-person. Will, I will meet at the Dunkin' Donuts on Broadley Parkway every third Saturday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Thank you. Councilman Druffel. Yeah, this uh, coming Tuesday, we will be having a uh, District 23 community meeting at uh, 6.30 uh, at uh, Bellmead United Methodist uh, from 6.30 to 8. Uh, it is live. Um, we will require masks, and we will have social distancing. But at the same time, uh, we are excited to do it live. We'll be talking about uh, property taxes and the transportation plan. I hope you can make it. Thanks. Thanks. And then any other all right, Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Pertem. Um, just wanted to remind people as we draw to a close with the Music City Center uh, vaccination site, there are still great ways to get vaccinated as we start to return to normal, as we look at a change in our local health orders, CDC guidance, et cetera. 
uh, getting vaccinated is the best way to start to resume normal life. So if you have not yet uh, been vaccinated against COVID-19, you can make an appointment at Recover Health or at the former Kmart on Murfreesboro Pike by calling the Metro Public Health Department at 615-862-7777. Also recommend visiting covid19.nashville.gov for all of the latest uh, on, on the state of COVID-19 in Nashville. Also wanted to mention, we are starting uh, serious discussions about the budget. If you visit nashville.gov and pull down the government tab, you will see a link to the Citizen's Guide to the Nashville Budget. Uh, this is a great resource that pulls together all of the uh, overall budget documents, including the mayor's presentation, uh, the actual budget book, uh, and a bunch of resources, including breaking things down by department. As we start these discussions, this is a great way to familiarize yourself with the way we govern the city financially. So I encourage people to take advantage of that Citizen's Guide. Thank you, Mr. Proton. Councilmember Van Rees. Uh, yes, and going on in District 8 this Wednesday at 6 p.m., there will be a community meeting for the Graymar Neighborhood Association to hear a presentation from Metro Public Schools regarding the future of the Graymar um, Middle School. Uh, as you know, the Graymar uh, family uh, merged with the Jerry Baxter family, and so uh, the property is uh, under review for different uses and we wanna make sure that we get feedback from the surrounding neighborhood. You can register for that uh, online uh, webinar Zoom meeting uh, at the Metro Nashville calendar. There is a link. There's also links available uh, through the Graymar Neighborhood Association newsletter and Facebook page. Also this uh, Friday, the Nashville uh, LGBTQ Chamber um, and um, the uh, folks uh, representing uh, a number of different things regarding Pride Month will be presenting along with Judge Bell uh, on her program. Uh, we'll be hearing from the prep clinic and um, some others uh, regarding a Vanderbilt study on LGBT health at the caucus meeting. The LGBTQ caucus meeting will be this Friday at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m in the meeting room at the Hampton Inn at Skyline. And uh, more than likely, we'll have a pizza at Rock and Dough afterwards. So if you want to hear more about that, because it will not be recorded, we want to make sure that you know about it so that you can come and uh, hear what's going on. It'll be our uh, first live uh, caucus meeting since January of 2020. And so we're looking forward to seeing folks. So both of those things are taking place in District 8 uh, this week, and I look forward to seeing you. Thanks so much. Thanks, and we're gonna cut it off at one more so we can get to the presentation. Um, Council Member Welsh. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. Um, it has been a very, very long time that we have all um, had to deal with COVID and being socially distanced. And um, I am very happy to announce that uh, the upcoming coffee and gin will be the first one in a year and a half in person. We will be meeting on Saturday, June 5th from 9 to 11 at District Coffee on Sidco Drive. I'm very much looking forward to seeing everyone one-on-one -on -one and hearing about concerns as we enter the new fiscal year for Nashville. Um, we'll be talking about um, also what is happening with uh, the cleanup of Mill Creek um, and the problems that we have been having there. So please come on out Saturday, June 5th, 9 to 11 at District Coffee for coffee and gin. And um, I look forward to seeing everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Swope. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank everyone, friends, family, and members of the homeless community that showed up today in honoring Louis Johnson. Whereas longtime Nashville resident and founder of Layman Lessons Ministries, Louis Johnson passed away peacefully on February 8th, 2021 in Nashville. He was 70 years old. Louis served Nashville, the state of Tennessee, and the United States of America through continuous acts of selfless giving during his lifetime as a minister, author, historian, coach, speaker, producer, and businessman. And whereas spending his preschool years in the company of his grandmother at her one-room shack, he acquired his devout love of God and country from her, from her during long walks to church every Sunday. And whereas, 
Having excelled in sports through his college days, Johnson officiated countless high school and youth football, baseball, and softball teams throughout the years. His crowning sports achievement was coaching the 1994 World Series Girls Fast Pitch Softball Champions, the Goodlettsville Bells. And whereas Louis' greatest, Louis greatest challenge and his greatest success came in founding and operating Lehman Lessons Ministries, with no paid staff since its founding in 2001, Johnson created an organization that has brought over 8,770 homeless persons to God, fed and clothed over 20,000 of Nashville's homeless population, and currently operates in 24 states. Layman Lessons Ministry achieved Guide Star's platinum rating and was named by two Nashville CPAs as being the number one charity in America in 2018, with over 99.8% of all donations and fundraising to feed and clothe the homeless community in Nashville going directly to that purpose. And whereas Louis Johnson, the humanitarian, authored 62 books related to God and country, aided constitutional legislation in 28 states, produced 12 documentaries on the homeless crisis, and authored over 100 television programs on behavioral health issues within the homeless community. And Johnson's never-ending commitment to God, America, and his fellow man have been apparent for decades in Nashville, his home, and to the homeless community, which continues to mourn his loss. He will forever be remembered as a true man of God, a stalwart believer that all men, women, are created equal and should be treated and loved accordingly. Now, therefore, we, the signatories here under, being members of the Council of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, do hereby recognize, honor, and commend the life and undying giving of Louis Johnson, Jr. to the people of Nashville, the state of Tennessee, and the United States of America. Signed, me and Councilman Steve Glover. And with that, I'd like to bring up former Councilman Dwayne Dominey. Thank you, Speaker. I'd just like to say a few minutes. I, I was honored to gather information to put together this proclamation. And in doing so, I spoke with a, a pastor many of us may know. His name is Reverend Enoch Fuzz. I called him up to say that we were doing a, something to honor Louis. And his words to me were, whatever you're doing, I would be honored to speak on his behalf. In fact, he said, you know what Louis has done for my congregation? He said, he said Louis gave $2 million worth of food to his congregation. He said that multiple times in our conversation. And I, and I, I would covet your prayers on uh, Reverend Fuzz's behalf. He's not doing well today. He had planned to come down here, but he's not doing well. He's suffering from cancer. But uh, he was honored to be part of this resolution. And I come down to speak on Louis's behalf. Louis was a friend of mine. Louis gave tirelessly, and I know personally folks that he's provided food for. I've donated food from organizations myself to his ministry, and he always had a place where people could use it to take care of the hungry. And he did that in honoring folks. And I think it's appropriate and present for us to honor a man such as that here with this, this council. And thank you for your time. Thanks. Um, well, I uh, appreciate that. I'm going to wrap up the announcement session by just for the viewing audience to make sure everybody understands that what you just heard um, was a text of a resolution that got indefinitely deferred at the last meeting. Um, and I, I pass no judgment, um, but um, uh, if you Google the gentleman, you'll find that he's written that uh, only Muslims commit terrorist acts and called Islam a false religion, false god with a false prophet. Um, and that's why it got indefinitely deferred at the last meeting. Appreciate you all coming today. Thank you. people in to see our city. We now have Fisk University.